What's going on, folks? It's Mike here, and in today's lesson, we're going to be talking about pass by reference. On some previous lessons, we've learned about references and what those are. And we've learned about another way to pass data around in functions, which was pass by value, where we were making copies. Let's go ahead and dive into pass by reference and see exactly what's going on here. So something that we can do in C++ that's not available in languages like C is this idea of pass by reference. Now pass by value is available in C and we've already learned in C++. So just to remind you of what that is, I'm going to go ahead and rerun this example. If you want, you can pause and try to make a guess at what X's value is. If you didn't previously do that exercise, please go ahead and do so. So in three, two, and one, I'll go ahead and run this example. And we'll go ahead and just run the program here. And again, you'll see that whatever the value is that I'm passing in here at line 15, it's not changed. So this is pass by value. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and just call this pass by value now that we know the name here. And that just makes it a little bit clear. So pass by value. OK, so what exactly is pass by reference? Well, I'm going to take this same function here. And let me go ahead and just make a copy of it here and make one small change for it to be passed by reference. And that means annotating the type to be a reference type here. So int and then an ampersand after it. So now we're passing in a reference type, which again just means it's an alias for something that already exists, some other thing in memory. So I'll actually rename this alias or we could do alias or reference, whatever you prefer here. So let's go ahead and update this alias here. And let's go ahead and um, just to make a little bit more clear, let's go ahead and actually print out the value here of our alias or the uh, address actually is a little bit more clear. Just so you can see again from our previous lesson where we learned about references that, well, Aliases address should be the same thing as whatever we're passing in. So it should be the same as X. So if we modify it, and here's where the quiz comes in, what do you think X's value is going to be at the end of this lesson? All right, so one little fix here. Let's go ahead and just make this fit on one line and compile, see if we made any mistakes, no mistakes, and go ahead and pause this video, and then I'll reveal the answer. So in three, two, one, make your predictions of what X is going to be and enter. Well, I didn't call pass by reference, so <laughs> no change there. Pass by value. So let me go ahead and just make a little uh, change here. Pass by reference. I'll comment this one out, recompile, and now see if your prediction held. Well, this time, nine, 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 nine. Okay, so the actual value changed here. And if we look at the aliases address here, OX7FFE9, et cetera, et cetera, all the way to the same, it's the same thing as X's address. Now behind the scenes, and we haven't talked about this yet, this is essentially a pointer we're passing in, which stores an address of something. Um, so it makes sense that they would be the same here. So this checks off the first box here in our diagram. This allows us to mutate data that we pass into functions. Now, what's super cool about this is we've avoided making a copy because we're just using exactly this X here that's stored once in memory and manipulating and changing that data however we like in this function. Okay, now what could convince us that this is more efficient? That's bullet point number two here. That is, why should we care about pass by value versus pass by reference? How do we put all this together? So let's go ahead and do a little experiment. And to do this experiment, I'm going to need to make it a little bit more powerful by trying to pass more data in to each of these functions just to show you how expensive a copy is. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is include a new data structure called a vector. And we'll do a lesson on vectors later on, but for now you can just think about it as an array that can resize and grow bigger. And I'm also going to want to use our algorithm library so that we can populate our vector with some interesting data. Okay, so what I'm going to do is a, an experiment, just a little ad hoc experiment to time how much more expensive it is to do pass by value versus pass by reference. And again, why we care about these semantics when passing data into functions. Okay, so we're not going to care about the addresses of anything. 
uh, for now. All I'm going to want to do instead is create some vector here of integers. And what we're going to want to do is fill up this vector here. So let's go ahead and for our uh, vector, we are going to reserve, let's say, 1,000 integers here, and then use our fill function to start from the beginning of our vector to the end of our vector, and just fill it with the value 1 here. Okay, now let's go ahead and change our function signatures so that they accept a vector and the data type of integers. And likewise, the same for our pass by reference, and importantly, making sure that we are passing in this vector data structure by reference here. Okay, and just for fun, let's go ahead and just try to do a little bit of work here and maybe change the first element in our vector to, say, one here. Okay, now I just want to make sure that this code uh, compiles to start and fix any bugs, so First, I'm just going to call both of our functions and see if they even work here. Okay, uh, and let me make sure I uh, save here, compile, and let me go ahead and run. And actually, before I run, um, reserve will reserve or set a capacity for this vector of 1,000. What I actually want to do is um, let me just initiate or instantiate with, say, 1,000 uh, elements here. So let's go ahead and do that. If I run this program, it's going to call both the pass by value and pass by reference functions. Now let's go ahead and up our stakes a little bit now that I know that's compiling. Let's say that we have a data structure, uh, this vector, again, which you can think of as an array here, and I'll draw it here. So it's just like an array here, except it's holding a thousand elements in it. So zero, one, two, three, four, etc., cetera, uh, all the way to a thousand and let's just say to n elements here. So there's a bunch of boxes for each of the elements um, storing all of our data. And let's go ahead and make this, let's try 100,000 elements here. So I'm gonna go ahead and compile it, run it, and it still works. So let me go ahead and just time this program. So you can do this on a terminal with time, and it looks like it takes about 0 0.002 seconds, so not too much. So let's just keep increasing the size, make it about 10 times bigger, rerun it, 0 0.006, maybe times it by 10 again, run it again. And now we're starting to get some meaningful results here. So let me see if I can make this even larger here and try to run this again. And it took about half a second. Okay. So the actual time or the real time in the real world was about 0.6 seconds. And I wonder if I just call one of these functions, which one is taking more of the time. So I'll go ahead and comment out pass by reference. We'll have to recompile and we'll rerun this. And that takes about 0.59 seconds to just make the copy of our vector and set one of the elements values. And then, well, we lose that copy unless we did something interesting with it. Now let's compare that with the pass by reference example. And I'll go ahead and recompile and rerun it. And we'll see that, well, we've optimized even further here. We've saved about 0.1 seconds here from our previous example. Now let's say I want to make this even bigger here. And just to sort of uh, annotate here, We've got about 100 million elements, so let's try if we can pass in a billion elements here. Um, and actually, this might work with C++17. Just so you can kind of, you can put um, some underscores sometimes to make the number bigger, but anyway, you can see that this is representing a billion elements. Let's go ahead and compile. The C++17 doesn't really matter, uh, but let's go ahead and see how long pass by reference takes now. And it's going, it's going, it's going, it's spending most of its time filling these elements here, and that took about four seconds. Okay, so let's try pass by value. And we've recompiled, and let's try to rerun this. And it's going and going and going. Let's see how much time will it take about six seconds. So 
we've increased our efficiency here just by passing by reference by you know 1.4 seconds and you might say well mike that's not a big deal but what if we're doing this in a loop over and over and over again making these copies so again we can make these examples as dramatic as we want but i think you get the idea for the efficiency from this little experiment we've run on pass by value versus pass by reference and there's a million different things that we could do or control for in this experiment but i just want to assure you that pass by reference is going to be more efficient if you're mutating the data and you want to keep those changes so folks i hope pass by reference was interesting i hope you got a little teaser of a data structure so you can see what happens when you pass big data around to functions how we can make it more efficient and now you know how to use your functions in C++ to mutate the data. We'll in fact learn one other way to mutate data when we pass things into functions, but we'll have to learn about pointers before we do that, which are essentially what references are uh, built on top of. All right, folks, so I hope this was interesting. I hope you're starting to get into the nitty gritty of C++ and enjoying the power of the language. If you're enjoying it, go ahead and like and subscribe, and then we'll see you in the next video. We'll see you next time, folks.